Hi scientists, I am here with another book about earthworms and it's nonfiction. It's called Earthworms Underground, written by Kevin Beals, illustrated by Deborah Bandolin and Bob Dacey. And in this picture, you can really see the segments. Those are the lines. And here's the saddle. Hard to figure out which is the, the head and which is the bottom, the, the bottom or the tushy of the worm. This book also has a table of contents and that will show you what page you can find what you're looking for. If there's certain topics about earthworms that you're looking for. And I'm going to start with the question that this book starts with that I really like. Can you imagine what it would be like to live underground in the soil? Hmm. We're going to be writing about that, so think about that. Earthworms have adaptations that help them survive in their underground habitat. What adaptations do you think earthworms have? And what that means is what things do earthworms have that help them survive, just like it asks. So what things about them make it so that they can live underground? How do they breathe underground? How do they move around? What do they eat? How do they protect themselves from danger? Some good questions. Let's start with how earthworms breathe. When we breathe, our bellies move in and out. You don't see that in an earthworm. Earthworms absorb air through their skin. An animal that breathes, breathes through its skin needs moisture. So that's why I keep spraying the earthworms in room eight. If their skin dries out, it can't absorb air. So their habitat where they live is soil with lots of moisture. Then they can breathe there. They don't usually come out of the soil unless it is wet above ground because they need moisture to breathe. So many times after it rains, you'll see worms on the sidewalk. When I was a kid, it rained a lot on the East Coast, in the East Coast especially in the spring. And my brother and I would walk around and we would take the earthworms off the sidewalk and then put them on the dirt so that they could be back in the dirt. But they come out because there's too, if there's too much moisture, they can't live there either. So let's talk about how they move. Many animals move with their legs. Do earthworms have legs? They don't. They have different ways to move through the soil. Their bodies are made of segments and each segment has tiny hairs on it. You can see little teeny weeny things sticking up. And those are their hairs. When an earthworm moves, it reaches forward with its pointed head and the segments of its body become longer and that makes that thins out the front end and then they use the little hairs to hold on to the soil. Pretty cool. Then the head, after it stretches, pulls the rest of the body forward and then it becomes shorter and now the earthworm is short and fat. When the head reaches forward again, making the front end thin and long. So it reaches and pulls and reaches and pulls. So that's really pretty cool. Let's see, let's talk about what earthworms eat now. Earthworms eat soil and dead and living things in the soil. Sometimes you can see things moving through an earthworm's body. Earthworms dig through the soil as they eat. The burrows they dig can last a long time and they use the burrows to get from place to place. So they live in burrows. An earthworm doesn't need everything that goes into its mouth as it digs. The stuff it doesn't use 
comes out its other end, okay? Just like people. Earthworm droppings have a lot of nutrients that mix with the soil, and that's what plants need to grow. Okay, an earthworm digs burrows as it eats. These burrows help let air into the soil. Plant roots need air, and earthworms make the soil better for plants. So they are super important. Let's talk about how they protect themselves. How do you think they protect themselves? That's a good question. Stop and think before I read. I want you to see if you can think of some ways they might be able to protect themselves. Hmm, let's see. Living underground protects earthworms from many predators because they're underground, but not all of them. Some predators also live underground. Can you think of animals that live underground or that live in burrows? Hmm, let's see. Groundhogs, moles. And when those animals come near, the earthworms can feel the soil shaking and they move quickly to get away, huh? Birds, I'm sure many of you thought of birds, are also predators of earthworms. Some birds stand on the ground and listen for earthworms moving under them. That's pretty cool. Birds try to pull earthworms out of their burrows. Earthworms hold onto the soil with their tiny hairs. Sometimes the bird eats the whole earthworm but earthworms have a strange adaptation to protect them. Hmm, what do you think that strange adaptation might be? What do you think? So the bird's trying to pull the earthworm out of the soil. What do you think it might be? Okay, I'm gonna keep reading. If a bird pulls on an earthworm's tail end, sometimes it breaks off and the bird is just left with a piece of the tail. The piece keeps moving. That is so cool. And the bird may think it has the whole earthworm. If only a little bit of the tail breaks off, the earthworm can move away and survive. And later the tail grows back. But if too much of the tail breaks off, the earthworm will not survive. Huh. That is super cool. Okay, we're gonna stop here. I want you to stop and think about what you've learned about earthworms. That's a lot. And then we'll go over some more things and we'll talk about the glossary in the back. So I don't know about you, but I see earthworms in a whole different light now.